what we're looking at today and what we know this week is that we did have an event with a landslide and it's not a typical landslide. This was a deep-seated bedrock type slip. We're looking at somewhere between 100 and 150 feet. That's why we have 10 inclinometers being installed right now. Inclinometer is actually, a, it's a plastic pipe. We drop down the inside of our borehole, put it all the way to the bottom. So we grout in around it, and that's basically our inclinometer setup. We then go in with a inclinometer probe. It's actually a tracked wheeled type uh, probe. It's about this long. Uh, we drop it to the bottom of the hole, bring it back up in one foot increments. We'll read it in one direction, flip it, send it back down, read it again in one foot increments gives a standard deviation and it gives a, a plot basically into a recorder. With the landslide mass itself, it sheared the ground and so we have shear planes that have developed. There may be multiple shear planes. Uh, we're not sure yet. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all underground so we can't see it. So this is why, why we use the inclinometers so we can actually determine the profile of what's underground that we can't see. Yesterday we had the site flown for an aerial DTM and what a DTM is is a digital terrain map that's going to give us an idea of what type of material we need to move. We have recently installed two extensometers and that's a crude way to measure how much the slope is moving. This is a fairly simple device that has a quarter inch wire that's anchored at the toe of the slope. It bridges the tension crack, comes up here over the pulley and we have 30 pound weight and it's uh, registered to a scale on the side of the tripod. If there's any relative movement in the direction of the wire, it's reflected in movement up and, up and down along the side of the scale. We also are doing what's called LIDAR, which is a laser type of a survey, again, to map the, the, the slip that we had. That's really what we got going on so far. It's a lot. Yes. Covering all your bases? We're trying to. What you see on the surface here is really the tip of the iceberg. We have about 500 foot, and this is where the slip is on the very top. At the base of this slip, it's a quarter mile wide. And what's, again, interesting about this uh, slope failure is that when you get to the base, usually you see a toe at the base that's moved with the slip. This toe did not move because how deep-seated the bedrock failure was. So you can't even see the toe movement at the base. What you see is a bunch of what we call tension cracks in the mass that moved down the hill. ADOT, keeping Arizona moving.